Good morning from Panhandle Outdoors, America's only daily outdoor TV show. Your source for fishing, hunting, and information for folks who enjoy the great outdoors. Now sit back, relax. It's Panhandle Outdoors. Good morning, folks. Welcome to Panhandle Outdoors on this Monday morning. I'm Winston Chester. I'm glad you're here. We've got a great show lined up as always, but first our weather brought to us by Haney Technical Center at the corner of Baldwin and Highway 77. Good folks out there and good programs out there. We're looking at a high today of 87. has been out of that all three or four weeks. Low tonight, 75. Water temperature, 87. Real steady on that. Our Monday moon phase brought to us by the fine folks at Sand Hill Seafood. We're on, we had our full moon last week. Now we're on a waxing stage. We've got about two more weeks. have another full moon coming up. The August full moon to be coming up. So that's right around the corner. Be here before you know it. Tide chart brought to us by Kent Forest Lawn uh, right here on 23rd Street. We're looking at another strong tide day. We had a good weekend of tides, another strong tide day today and tomorrow. So then it's going to start uh, neeping out later on in the week. But a uh, high tide is at 11.02 this morning and a low tide at 8.59. And personally, you're talking about fishing and all, a lot of times you know, high tide, is, people are excited when it's in the morning. But I, I personally like the high tide around the middle of the day because you fish that incoming tide all morning. If you're outgoing tide person, then you go out there fishing in the afternoon and take a break right there because you have that dead time when the tide's not moving. You have anywhere about 30, 45 minutes, sometimes an hour of just flat out dead time. You look around and, you know, you get the feeling where things, you look around in nature, been around outdoors enough, you can look around and see what's, if it's sort of lively, you can be in a tree stand and see what's popping, you know, and you know what's going on. Same way sitting in a boat or on a bank. We can just tell by the signs of nature, the birds and the squirrels and the rabbits and all that. So anyway, that's just my feelings on that. I love it. I love a high tide around the middle of the day. All right, let's see uh, our marine forecast coming out of south around 9. All right, let's take a break. We'll be right back. All right, welcome back. I was telling Jeff, I don't have a whole lot planned uh, for the show today, so y'all just hang in there with me. I always tell my guests if, we, if they don't talk and run out of things to say, they're going to have to sing. So if I'm singing toward the end of the show, you know I'll, I'll run out of things to talk about. But I always have some pictures. Y'all are good about uh, sending pictures, and like I said, I pick some up off, uh, off my Facebook and all. It, it really, uh, social media on the positive side, some really good information. Also, I'm going to share some of that with you. This first one here. This is sent by Matt Paramore. That's Ken's son, Matt, and they sent it to the Panama City Fishing page, and it's really, it really means a lot this time of year. And he's talking about, you know, about the divers displaying, I won't read it to you, but it's talking about displaying the diver's flag. And remember now, it's got, it's got a, the width of that stripe has got to be one-fourth of the height of the flag. The flag must be square, rectangular, and it gives you sizes to it. But down the last couple of sentences, Divers must display the flag and remain within 100 feet if you're in a river now, but in an open system, open area like the bay, you got to be within 300 feet. And isn't that what we always talk about here in Panhandle Outdoors? A football field length away for, to get on top of people or for safety and all. And boaters are required to maintain the same distance from a, <clears throat> from a driver's down flag. And this is what you, you're probably going to run into where you've got a lot of people in, in boating and all out here at Shell Island. You've got the St. Joe Bay situation coming up with scallops and all. You remain 100 yards away from that, from that boat, from driver down. You can't be running the boat any closer. That's illegal if you do that. So just be aware of that. And we're going to talk more about it as that August the 17th season approaches us. My fishing buddy, Andy Weeks, I'm, I'm proud of him. He's got a, a new toy here. He got a 250 Tohatsu. He's going to put it on that Miss Joyce, and you saw the video we had last week. He's getting ready for that Sea Quarters Kingfish shootout coming up this weekend. Uh, that's a nice boat right there. Connor McClain's been on the show. I'm sorry, nice motor. Connor McClain's been on the show before. I got a kick out of this because Connor's a young man, yet he's freezing the fish and is labeling them. Isn't that good for a 20-something-year-old? Got flounder, and always put a date on the fish when you freeze it. And he put speckles in the lower hand corner, speckles sea trout, okay? Not, not just speckled trout, but speckled sea trout. <laughs> and uh, good job, Connor McLean. That's a good catch right there, buddy. This has nothing to do with outdoors, but I ran across this. This makes a lot of sense. People are willing to arm teachers with guns, but they banned this. And this kept us all from acting like a fool back in the day. 
bring this back. Uh, isn't that true, though? We, we'll give a teacher a gun, but we won't give him a paddle. Go, go, figure, go figure that one out. I, I can't figure it out. All right. Miss Coleman uh, had a good, good week, you know, even at the end of snapper season. They called her. Uh, here's Jeff Manley and his son, Abel. He got a, a mixed bag on the floor days of Kings, Grouper, and Lane Snapper, and Mangrove Snapper, and then a bunch of catch and release Red Snapper. So you still go there and have a good time and still bring home some meat. Brad Stevens sent this. This coming week, uh, Wednesday, August the 1st, uh, two days from now, a ribbon cutting ceremony for a new kayak launch down there off of Maple Avenue. And that's, uh, that's really good. I applaud the city of Panama City for doing that. That's going to be a free launch. Uh, St. Joe, Mexico Beach, they're not going to charge $10 to launch your kayak there. Thank you, Brad, for sharing that. Kingfish Shootout Boat Raffle. I'm going to mention it one more time. Listen, they left me five tickets to sell. I only got one ticket left to sell for $100. Uh, some viewers have already bought some. I'm buying one myself. So I've got one ticket left for the boat raffle if you want to get it to me and I'll get it in the pot this weekend. You might win that big old boat. It's going to be uh, one in 350 uh, odds of winning. That's pretty doggone. You can't beat those odds in anything uh, gambling. Uh, this is a throwback. This is 1958. I know it's fuzzy. <clears throat> Some of y'all will remember the Conrad family. Nick Conrad and Johnny Conrad are brothers. Nick is at Auburn. Now he taught up at Auburn. I think he's retired. In 1958, their dad was Harold Conrad and Gerald Conrad, that family there. Uh, 1958, he was 10 years old, and he caught that red snapper in St. Andrews Bay, 25 pounds. Is that not cool? A 25-pound red snapper in St. Andrews Bay. FWC sent this out, okay? They're going to be, uh, all right, see Black's Island. This is St. Joe Bay. This is important now, though, and I'm going to talk more about it. I may get Travis or, or Becca on here because that area straight south, see that red square? I'll blow it up right there, but you can't really. <laughs> how about that? You, can you recognize that? They're going to have it marked, and that's going to be a protected area. It's that buoys, FWC buoys, starting August the 1st, Wednesday, through December the 31st. That's protected. You cannot go in there, all right? So for anything, you just can't go in there. And that's where uh, the scallops are going to try to raise in them. I don't know if you saw this, a new, uh, a new record, new world record, 820, a new Florida record, 826-pound Florida record bluefin tuna caught over in Destin. And the name of the boat, you never know. I thought that's cool. And that's a nice tuna right there. I made a lot of tuna steaks right there. Uh, it, it will. And I, I'm going to talk about this more, more later in, in another segment. But that's coming up the 15th annual. And we've talked about it before. And we're going to, and all the proceeds go to leukemia research. And all kind of ways you can help out. You know, you can be a participant and, and uh, fish it like we do. Or you can, you know, buy a lot of raffle tickets or any way. Or you can just uh, make a donation or whatever. But if, if you ever want to be a participant, this is the year to be a participant and be supportive of it. Because this is the year they're going to hit the $1 million mark off of fishing, a little fishing tournament, a weekend fishing tournament in Carabelle. Let's take a break and we'll be right back. Okay, welcome back. On Friday show, when I had uh, Ronnie here, we, we talked about some the uh, Pompano, the state record Pompano and the world record Pompano. So I looked it up. I'm going to go and show it to you. This is by the International, down at the bottom, that, that slogan right there, the International Game Fish Association. Uh, that's down there outside of Miami. We've been to it before. But here it is, right here. The world record Pompano was caught. Okay, first of all, on bottom left to right, it weighed 8 pounds, 4 ounces. The location... Port St. Joe Bay, Florida, USA. Caught in October the 16th, 1999 by Barry Houston, and uh, that was it right there, and it's still recognized by the International Game of Fish as the, as the state record. Okay, going, uh, while we're in that area, let's go ahead and uh, I got, finally got some pictures of, of this kids, I gotta tell you about the kids tournament in Carabelle. We didn't get a chance to go, but uh, from all indications, it was a success, and when any time, you know, if you get 50 or 60 kids to, at a kids tournament or a kids day of fishing or whatever, if you get that kind of participation, that's good, 50 or 60 kids. Folks in Carabelle at Seacourt Marina last week when they had the kids tournament, 
the participants were 266. I repeat, 266 kids fished that kids tournament. That, that's, that's incredible. And I want to uh, thank all of the folks down there, all the volunteers and all the folks who took kids fishing. And so I've got a, I've got a series of pictures uh, sent to us. I don't have the names of the kids, but you just look at the smiles on the faces. You can see this out on a deck in front of Sea Quarters, right next to Carabelle River. And now look at that flounder. That's a nice flounder. And look at that, look at that smile right there on that little girl. That's a cell cat, and she's as happy as she can be. Great pictures here. And this is one of the funnest ones. First of all, look at the girl kissing a fish. But I think even funnier is the girl on the left <laughs> smiling at her, smiling at her kissing the fish. That is funny. Okay, and uh, you're talking about a nice drum. Check this out. Now, I don't know which one of the little boys caught it. They probably took turns, and Daddy might have helped. But anyway, good picture there, right about that leaderboard. All right, another big catfish. All right, got that one, that one here. I think they're looking at pinfish and some chofas. Catfish here, good pictures. All got t-shirts. Oh, that's a great picture now. A nice speckled trout. Nice speckled trout. I've seen that young man down there fishing before. He fishes it every year. So anyway, thank all the folks down there that's actually come up and, uh, and, and helped out on that. So. But that 266 kids, phenomenal. Now let's move on. One thing I wanted to mention, uh, someone sent this to me also, and it's sort of a general, uh, they, they ask, have you seen, uh, seen as many burglaries? I hate to change something, go to something positive, something negative, but I'm, I'm switching tunes here. So many burglaries of outdoor equipment and different things around people's houses and all, where people are just brazen uh, uh, daylight, you know, daylight sometimes, sometimes at night, they're stealing these, these little utility trailers, four-wheelers, uh, little boats and all that. And I, I just want to mention, I don't talk about a lot on here about securing your your equipment and all, lawnmowers and everything. And a lot of times we take it for granted. Everybody, everybody, you know, everybody's not good people. And we've got some bad people out there. Some, there's always evil in the world. And we just try to do the best we can to, to combat it and do the right thing. But as far as our personal equipment, you know, you. Uh, your trailers, there are all kind of ways secure, you know, if you, especially if you have them away from your house or something, you secure that boat trailer, put a lock on it. I, I double do, I double mine. I just have a, you know, chain and locks and all kind of stuff. And, and if you, somebody's gonna get my stuff, if they're not gonna go and get it. They're gonna have to work to get it. <laughs> and also uh, cameras. It's amazing how much you can see on, on cameras. And even if you got cameras up there, a lot of times that's a deterrent. To, to a theft and all. I just wanted to throw that out because I, you know, I thought that was important also. Uh, also, getting ready, uh, uh, I wanted to mention about the uh, scallop season coming up. Uh, again, I mentioned this on Friday's show uh, as, as we get toward it. Uh, this, uh, I mentioned about you know the little thing you pull back on your, on your spear gun or your little pole. They'll dry rot on you. In fact, I just, mine, mine broke off the other day. I just put it on the seat. I knew it, I was gonna replace it. so. I'm running down to CNG this week and get some, get one replaced and all. But uh, they, they'll just do that; they'll deteriorate. So check your equipment out. One of the things, I, I, all reports now I, I'm getting from St. Joe Bay, there are not a lot of scallops out there. So again, like I mentioned the other day, make it a boating outing. So don't don't look at it back in the day. Our our what we looked at as a barometer for our success was you know how many scallops we had, how many five-gallon buckets of scallops we had. Those days were gone. We don't, we don't have those anymore. Even nowadays, you don't want to look at the amount of scallops you have. It's just uh, the quality of time spent with your family and friends. That's the barometer. And also, if you want to get a meal, a couple of meals off of it, take a little spear gun with it, a little, or just those little poke poles. They don't, you know, their little poke poles are fine because, and, and look, those mullet to be swimming by, and most of the time, you're going to see some flounder. If you get in, a, in a, some channels and all around the edge of channels or laying in the grass, you're going to see flounder. Make sure they're the right size. Make sure they're, they're 11 inches. Make sure they're 11 or 12 inches. Check the size on that. And so I, I've come up with this phrase now, the St. Joe Summer Slam. You know, which the slam is when you catch like the, the redfish, the trout, and flounder. That's, a, that's a, the, the panhandle slam. But we're going to have a special St. Joe Summer Slam. It's going to be scallop, flounder, and mullet. If you get those three right there, you've accomplished the St. Joe Summer Slam. So, so be aware of that and, and, uh, and look at it that way, okay? And get your, get your uh, 
and remember now, it's gonna open up on a Friday, which is interesting, and the big problem to me is add a lot of stress on my schedule because also opening on Friday, August the 17th, is a Buckmasters Expo in Montgomery, Alabama. And I plan on, Gail and I don't go every year, every couple of years, we'll go to it. This is our year to rotate, to go to it. I've been looking forward to it for months and I looked at the scallop season, it's going to open the same day. So we got a big decision to make. And it, uh, being an outdoorsman is sometimes just stressful, but it's a good stress trying to decide which one of those to go to. Let's take a break and we'll be right back. Okay, welcome back. I apologize, I don't have fishing game times with me and we'll try to get them to you, but uh, just go fishing if you've got an opportunity. Go, go out in the woods right now if you get a chance. I wanted to, I've been working on this, and this is fascinating to me. I, well, we could, I showed the pompano and everything, but we're looking at some freshwater records, and you can go to the FWC page, and, and they've done a good job with this and put this together. And I'm gonna go down, I hope I get all of them in. I'm gonna start at the top right here with a largemouth bass. Okay, here's a species, largemouth bass, 17 pounds, is in, on, in Polk County, I got a buddy from Polk County, in 1986, so that's the route we're going. What's cool, if it's in red, if it's in red like these, in red, they have an actual picture of it, so I'm gonna pop up the largemouth bass, and, and here's the guy that caught it in July of 1986, and that is still recognized, 17 pounds is the Florida state record, okay? But now right below that, they have a 20 pounder, and it was called in 1923, and in Pasco, that's that same area. That is, and, uh, but they, you know, back then, the FWC was not able to get in there and, and validate it, but by, they put that in there because all the records show that, you know, that they, everybody witnessed it and they weighed it on the scale and all that, but they just didn't recognize it. So anyway, there has been a 20 pounder caught here. All right, next one, the Red Eye Bass in the Apalachicola River, home county, Gaston County, in 1989, so let's take a look at that. Here it is right here. Red eye bass, seven pounds, the old state record. All right, let's, let's move on down. This next is spotted, spotted bass in Gulf County. How about Gulf County coming up with a record? 3.7 pounds in 85, so I think that's gonna be broken pretty soon. Swanee bass, of course, will be caught in the Swanee River. We know that, but here we go again, Calhoun County, Chipotle River, the shoal bass, 5.95 pounds. Okay, after that, we got the striped bass, <laughs> this, not 42 pounds. Folks, they get big. That's a lot of good fishing up there. After I go to the river, Gaston County, that means when I read that, that's caught up there by the Jim Woodruff Dam, right there, uh, out, right there by Chattahoochee. That's, that's where they catch those big ones, Alfonso Barnes. Then a white bass, uh, again, Gaston County, up there by the dam. Sunshine bass, Lake Seminole, in 1985, that's 1982. That, these are old records now. Lake Seminole in Jackson County. The black crappie, okay. The black crappie, 3.83 pounds, Lake Talquin. Ben Curry, I know the Curry family over there, 1992. Then a flyer, that's a little, the flyer is recognized, 1.3 pounds, that's gonna be broken soon, Jackson County. All right, let's go to one we got a picture of, the bluegill, right at three pounds, 2.95, Crystal Lake, Washington County by John LeMaster in 1989, and we got a picture of that, check it out. John LeMaster bluegill, two pounds, I mean, that's right at three pounds, isn't it? <laughs> And April, the, that's, look, that's a big bluegill in it. April 19th, uh, okay, good job. That was 1989. And we're going down to the red breast uh, sunfish, Swanee River, uh, red ear sunfish. Here we go, Maris Mill Pond. They're full of them right there. Four point, that's at almost five pounds. Again, 1986, look at these right here. 84, 80, 86, the dates on the 85. All these are old records. Spotted sunfish. Uh, how about a warmouth over in Okaloosa County on the Yellow River? We know where that is. And that was that was two pounds. That's a big that's a big warmouth, two and a half pound warmouth. A chain pickerel in Lake Talquin. The chain pickerel right there. I'm gonna to get through these, I'm gonna speed up. Chain pickerel, I'm uh, let's go on down. You can see uh, 
The common carp is vacant, so you can get your name in there. The regular carp, uh, well, they, that's an asterisk by it because they didn't verify it. I know, I know Bernard, I know Bernard Rowan. He did catch that. Channel cat, how about that? 44 pound channel cat, channel cat in, down in Lake County. Flathead catfish back up in our area, Chattahoochee River. This was called last year or uh, two years ago. 63 pounds. We got a picture of that. 63 pounds. Here it is right here. Charles Patchen. I know the Patchen family. Uh, 63.8 pounds in May of 2016. That is cool. Uh, I'm gonna go to, okay, let's go down. Let's jump on the blue cat. Remember, this is interesting, the blue cat. Okay, here's some other catfish, Whistler Coochie. Uh, let's go to blue cat, Choctaw River. And I remember that we just showed one, of, a buddy of ours watched the Panhandle Outdoors, 125 pounds, but it was not recognized, called it, called it on trot line. So let's look at this blue cat, okay? Here it is right here. Blue catfish, good job there. William Stewart III in 2015, and that record, can be broken. That, that, with, with a hook and line, it can be broken. Uh, we're gonna run out of time. Uh, I did wanna show y'all right down here, the big gar, the alligator gar. Check this out, alligator gar, 123 pounds. Can you imagine catching that or alligator gar on a rod and reel, 123 pounds at a Choctatchee River 20-something uh, years ago in Walton County. All right, so then these others are all in South, these are all South Georgia, I mean South Florida and uh, butterfly peacock and all those. And then on the bottom, all these, or, all these tropical fish. So, but the yellow, last one, yellow perch right here, yellow perch. And here it is, David Arthur Thomas, Dead Lakes in 2005, 1.46 pounds. So you go to my FWC and you can check these out. They got a, you can check out all of them. That's just a freshwater Florida State record verified by fish biologists and all, by the measuring, by the weight. So I got a kick out doing that last night. I, I, knew you, I, I know y'all enjoyed watching that too, so hope you did. So anyway, I got to wrap it up. Y'all have a great day today. Have a great week and plan to do some outdoor stuff. Do something good today for your fellow man. Have a great day and God bless. Thanks for watching America's only daily outdoor TV show, Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester, featuring hunting, fishing, and other activities and information to help you enjoy the great outdoors. Join us next time for Panhandle Outdoors.